In this example, we have an acceleration versus force graph. Okay, the acceleration is on the vertical axis, the force on the horizontal axis. Acceleration in meters per second squared, force in newtons. What do the rise, run, and slope of this graph represent? Well, the run is here, the rise is here. The run goes from 4 newtons to 7 newtons. So the run is 3 newtons. The rise goes from 0.7 meters per second squared to 1.6 meters per second squared. That's 0.9 meters per second squared. What's the meaning of the slope? Well, the meaning of the slope is, uh, well, let's first find the slope, then we'll see what the meaning of the slope might be. Okay? Uh, we have 0.9 meters per second squared for the rise, 3 newtons for the run, so that the slope is 0.9 meters per second squared over 3 newtons, which is 0.3 meters per second squared per newton. So the slope here is 0.3 meters per second squared per newton. Now how, how might we interpret this slope. Okay, let's zoom in on this as best we can. Okay, how would we interpret a slope of 0.3 meters per second squared per newton? Well, that means for each newton of added force, we get 0.3 meters per second squared of additional acceleration. What's that mean? Well, that's going to be related to the mass of the object, presumably, if the object has constant mass. Uh, but this could tell us if we added 8 newtons of force, how much would we expect the acceleration to go up? Well, 8 newtons times 0.3 meters per second squared per newton would be 2.4 meters per second squared. Okay, so this gives us some idea of the relationship between the acceleration and the force. Now, the interpretation here is not as straightforward as some others. It doesn't have a clear meaning like acceleration or velocity. And actually, if we worked out the units here, a newton being a kilogram meter per second squared, this would be 0.3 reciprocal kilograms, 0.3 per kilogram. Um, and that's not really all that enlightening either. Now, the point of this example is that we often have to think carefully about what these things mean. We have to not exactly uh, get outlandish in our interpretations, but we have to give some interpretation to a situation. And you can certainly imagine situations in which you would want to know how much extra acceleration you get from an additional force. And that's what we can determine from this kind of an example.